Hello and welcome to an installment of Mantis Hacks. In this video, I'm going to be looking at uh, my latest giant Lego build, which is based on this Lego forklift kit from 1977. It was Lego kit 850, and I believe it was the first in their range of expert builder kits, which later became Lego Technic. It was certainly my first Lego Technic kit. Anyway, this video is going to be about the process I used to build my giant version of this forklift truck kit. And I used two Lulzbot printers, a TAS-5 and a TAS-6. I'll be going through the processes I used and the materials. Uh, if you haven't seen the previous uh, giant Lego build I did, which was the Lego Go-Kart, please check out the description below for links to that. This kit has already been assembled by myself and my nephew Ruben. So let's just take a look at the giant assembly of this forklift truck kit before I start taking it apart and showing you how I built it. Well, there it is in all its glory. So uh, it's a pretty, pretty hefty beast. Steering works very nicely. The wheels roll well and uh, the forks are a little bit uh, stiff, but basically work. I think they'll get better the more they're used. Um, yeah, it's quite a kit. Uh, let's bring you in for a closer look. Okay, so let's start by looking at some of the simpler parts of this kit. Um, so for example, all of the yellow, that's actually most of the yellow, is PLA, apart from the really long Technic beams on the fork. So I switched to PLA for a couple of reasons um, on this particular project. I mean, I did the go-kart entirely in ABS, but I was struggling with the corners warping uh, and lifting off the bed. Uh, particularly on the longer parts like the 1x8 Technic bricks. Printing in this PLA was much easier. This is premium yellow from 3D Filler Print. I basically set my TAS 6 up just for PLA printing. Um, so that was just running day and night doing yellow parts for quite some time. So there was a little bit of corner lift on some of the parts. So I did put a, uh, a four or five layer brim on them just to keep them on the bed. But it was quite happy doing larger parts such as this. There's really no warpage in it at all. The, black um, Lego parts such as the seat. So this is PLA again, this premium black PLA, very easy for printing. Axles, so like this is a four axle here. This is printed in ABS and uh, on the TAS-5. I stuck with ABS for these just because I felt it could be stronger and needed to be stronger for the, for the axles. Um, they print fairly easily, I just print them straight up like that. I can print up to a six high axle on the TAS-5. If I need to go longer than that, so there's some um, eight axles and some 10 axles on this one. Uh, basically, I chop them in half and there's a um, strengthening studding bar that goes down the middle and then they get glued back together again, so ABS welded together. They print pretty easily. And the grey parts such as the cogs and the racking, um, so this is printed in ABS again on the TAS-5. So I do have a heated chamber on the TAS-5, it certainly helps when you're printing ABS. Um, so it's not a heated chamber, it is just a cabinet around it and the heat comes solely from the bed of the printer. The cogs are printed in two halves, cut down the middle, and ABS welded back together again, so there's no support material needed, so that's quite nice. It is a little tricky getting this fit right, so this is way too loose in here at the moment, and it does vary a little bit. I still need to look into why that is, and I think it's down to how I print my axles. Sometimes these come out really tight and sometimes they come out really loose. So that's something I am going to look at a bit more at some point. The Technic pins, again, printed in two halves. There is a screw down the end of the pin there. The screw lines are two halves of the print pin up and then they're um, acetone welded as well. All of these gray bits are, are ABS. So that fits a bit nicer. Um, again, it's kind of a little bit variable, but um, it is something you have to watch because some of these have come out really tight and I've then had to do some post-processing on them. I basically take a knife along the edges and just kind of scrape them back a little bit um, very carefully, just deburring them effectively or um, you know sanding back the edges just slightly. Uh, so on my TAS 6 and TAS 5, I can only print half of this diagonally across the bed. Um, so I've sliced this down the middle. 
and this is printed in a material called ABS-X and the reason why I wanted to use ABS or similar was so that I could acetone weld it back together. Now I also added some uh, additional strength in this um, because I didn't think the welded joint would be strong enough. Um, there's these little wedges that push in the top and the bottom of this hole in the middle where it's joined. Uh, and also there's a bolt in the back joining the two parts together. I could probably remove the bolt now, I'm not sure, uh, but I don't mind it being in there for the time being. Well, this ABSX material certainly doesn't warp as much on the bed um, as it says, it's a low warp ABS. However, the acetone welding doesn't really work the same either, and I don't really understand why that is. So I left some, uh, uh, some of this material, this ABSX, in acetone overnight, and it hadn't completely dissolved it. It had broken down and the dye color had come out, but it wasn't quite how you'd expect ABS to behave. So yeah, the jewelry's still out on this material, but it was a very close matching color for the PLA. Um, so that's what I used uh, for this kit. So one other part I needed to make in two sections was the four by 10 plate. Um, which uh, there's one of them there and there's uh, two of them on the top of the kit here. The way I went about that is to split it in two again uh, into a two four by five plates. But there are um, bolt holes through here and then on the inside you probably won't be able to see it but there's um, a little uh, M4 hex nut um, indent. So an M4 nut pushes inside of that M4 by 12 uh, bolt. You can join these two parts together and the bolt head disappears into the nut recess on this side as well. So you don't see the bolt when it's bolted in. However, when I inspected the kit and the assembly, you didn't really need to have these uh, bolted together as one for strength. Um, in fact, the, the kit itself kind of will hold them together as a one piece. So I did bolt one of them together on the bottom plate. I think I left the bolts in on this one here, um, but the ones on the top I've just left as two separate parts. Um, yes, cheating, but there we go. So let's take a look at the tyres. Um, these are always very interesting to print and possibly the most tricky parts just because of the materials. And so this first tyre here is printed in Ninja Flex and it's printed on my TAS 6 with a flex extruder. Uh, I printed this tyre with this face down like that, a 0.4 mil layer height with 20% infill. It took about 40 hours to print, um, so it's a, it's a pretty long print. It came out kind of soft, and I could tell straight away that this was gonna be too soft for the weight of this forklift uh, truck. I was having issues actually to print this, and um, I'd spoken to uh, Lolzbot support, and they said, oh, you should try something else, which was to take Ninja Flex and print it using a Moore Struder. So the Moore Struder has a 1.2 mil nozzle, so this tire was printed on a Moore Struder on my TAS 6 and it used the same settings. It was one perimeter as for the first tire, this softer one. One perimeter, 20% infill, uh, two bottom layers and three top layers. The difference is that this tire is actually printed this way up. So I get a nice clean face on the, on the outside of the tire. Um, and it also has the back chamfer on it like the original, whereas this one had a flat face on it. Uh, so this is, um, came out really well and um, on a more Struder I was using a 0.5mm layer height on this and it's much, much tougher. So it's going to support the weight of the vehicle. What's more, this was a 12 to 13 hour print, so a massive saving. So 40 hours, 12, 13 hours, Ninja Flex, more Struder. A little bit experimental on the print speeds and what have you, but I think I was getting to about 20 millimeters a second tops on this one. Support Lulzbot then suggested that I should try Polyflex material. So it's a harder material than NinjaFlex, um, but works really well with the Moore Struder. And they also had some profiles I could play with. So this tire was printed with Polyflex and it's a 0.6 millimeter layer height. Um, and it's come out really quite nicely. Uh, it's a much tougher material, so it is quite rigid. I mean, it's still flexible enough that you can get a tire into it. Let's have a look at that. There you go, very satisfying. But anyway, it's come out really nice. Um, it's harder, it's gonna support the weight of the vehicle, it's gonna roll easier. And what's more, it printed in seven hours. So what a saving. Um, you know, from the original one that was gonna take me 40 hours per tire, down to seven hours, and it looks great. Um, so that's Polyflex on a Moore Struder, um, works really nicely. So this last part is the turntable. 
So this is a little tricky piece that I had to cut up and uh, make out of several parts. Uh, the grey is um, four pips that are screwed onto this turntable on the top. And then there's another pip in the bottom there that holds the whole thing together. And that's actually screwed in from the top there. Uh, and that's printed so that there's a nice smooth surface on the underside of the table, of the turntable. Uh, and the yellow part is two parts as well, and it's uh, glued together. So you've got another nice smooth surface where that grey part meets it and beds down. Uh, and basically to try and keep the friction down as low as possible. Um, so that's screwed and glued together and then just snapped in from the top and that little grey pip holds it together in from the bottom there. So that works out really nicely and um, yeah, very pleased with that. So all that's left to do is talk about weights and costs. Um, so the original weight of the Lego kit is about 272 grams. Now, if I was to scale that up exactly, so this was all 100% infill, this is a five times scale, so 125 times the volume, it would come out at about 36 kilos. As it is, it's about 15% infill and it's coming in at 19 kilograms, which I can tell you now is still more than heavy enough when you want to move it around. So what about the cost? Well, this is about five to 550 pounds worth of material. It's not cheap. Also the investment in time, this is about 600 hours of print time. Uh, obviously having two printers helps enormously. So I think that's it for this video. Don't forget to check the description below. There you'll find links to the printer materials that I use and the printers. And of course, you'll find links to the other videos such as the giant Lego go-kart build and the assembly of this kit. If you like the video, do subscribe and share with friends. Of course, uh, leave any comments below. I'll be back next time with modifications to the giant Lego go-kart kit. Don't forget to check out my other projects on the YouTube channel and facebook.com forward slash Mantis Robot. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mantis Robot or Instagram. And don't forget to check the description section for further information on materials and printers that I use and also links to other videos. If you're looking to make your own version of one of these giant Lego designs, I'll be adding my STL files to my Thingiverse account, Mantis Robot. And of course, if you're enjoying these designs, you can show your appreciation by sharing or tipping me via my Thingiverse account.